podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Two North Carolina men recently fulfilled some pretty big dreams by producing a film on a unique music project and winning a major documentary award for their work. Mitchell, Reese, Mitchell Lewis recently spoke with them to learn more. John Brown, Rodrigo Dorfman, welcome to North Carolina Now. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Rodrigo, I'll start off with you. You are the producer, director of a mini documentary called One Night in Kernersville. Tell us a little bit about this documentary and why you decided to make it. Well, for the past 10 years, I think I've been doing a lot of shorts. I've done dozens and dozens of shorts, but all for NGOs, for non-for-profits, for artists. It's been, it's been basically work for hire in many ways. And even though I've had some latitude of artistic, um, artistic possibilities and freedom, I never quite felt that I had something that I could just claim for myself, that I had full control of it. So that when my friend John Brown called me up and said, I am recording a big band jazz album, and it's going to be right down the street in Kernersville. I thought, I got to be there. So I got to clear my schedule, and now I have a possibility of actually creating, bringing together two things that I love, jazz and filmmaking. And John, of course, this was one of your biggest dreams, ambitions, uh, to get involved with having this recording. What was it like going through the recording and, and knowing that, hey, this is one of my big ambitions. Well, it's very rewarding work to realize a dream. Uh, jazz is one of my many passions, but it's, uh, it's my life's work now, uh, teaching at Duke and performing in the area and performing in the region. Uh, it's what I do full time. And, and it's true, I had a dream of putting a big band together, and uh, it takes a lot of time and resources to get that done right. And uh, it's true, it was very rewarding in that moment to see all those things come together, those many pieces come together. Um, it was, it was very, very, very special. And Rodrigo, in the documentary, it seemed like your style was really up close and personal. Why, you, why did you decide to do that type of shooting? Well, f there were two reasons. One was the space itself. Even though it was a very big, spacious, beautiful space, there were 20 musicians in them. And they're all really tight, right next to each other. And they're these, you know, scoreboards where they put their music and the, the music stands and it's it was a difficult shoot and so I had to by definition be really up against them as close as possible at the same time I've always sort of fantasized about making a film mostly made of close-ups and I thought you know once I started filming and seeing how close I am I said well let me just zoom in even more and I started seeing these these uh, you know these these beautiful places and inside the instruments, these, you know, uh, the spit on the fingers. I started seeing how in the drum set, the little, the little metal, what are they called? Those little the, things, the hi-hats that, hi that, hi that just, the rivets, the yeah, rivets right. that go up and down that I'd never noticed before. Mm -hmm. I actually started seeing things that I'd never seen before because I'd seen jazz on a stage or in a rehearsal wasn't really paying attention. So it forced me to really come really close and I think that's what makes the film different from other films is that in some other films you see people zoom in from medium far away but here I am literally 12 inches away from the players and because they're so professional so focused because they've got such a great band leader who's keeping them on the beat it was as if I wasn't there so John the CD that you were working on during this film is called setting standards what's what's the status of it right now well, it's in the can, and we like to say in the, in the recording industry, uh, doing the post-production work on it now, getting it ready so they can be released this fall. Uh, it's actually part of a larger initiative that the band is doing to continue doing more recordings and to uh, start an arranging competition so that students will be able to write arrangements for us, and uh, we'll do that to support our education efforts. So, so this fall, maybe around uh, Christmas time, we'll, we'll definitely have it out. And of course, congratulations is in order for the both of you because uh, Rodrigo, actually the film received the jury award from the Full Frame Documentary Film Festival. What was that? What's, how is this so significant, the jury award? Well, the beauty of any award is that you're being, this specific award actually is because you're being recognized by your peers. And for me, having been participating in, in the Full Frame Film Festival for the past 10 years in various capacities, I've always sort of sat and watched other people get awards and always felt that it was such a beautiful moment for everybody because that festival has this capacity of, of the give and take where you feel you're really sharing the moment 
And for me, it was very special to... F I wondered, well, what does it feel like to be there, to get an award, to be recognized at this level? And when I got it, I have to say that it felt just as good as watching it, in a way. It was very beautiful, uh, very endearing, and, 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 and it was a wonderful way for me to finally go, okay, good, I'm, there is a recognition, and, it, and you can't say thank you, and you learn how to say thank you, and, and you move on with the, all the energy that everybody gives you. And John, you're getting recognized for your dream. What was that like? Well, whenever you can realize a dream, it's always a, a magical moment. Um, and speak, speaking of that, I have to say that that moment when they actually said uh, the winner of the best short film was one night in Kernersville, it was, you know, I kind of froze in time. And uh, partly because I had, had just gotten a big plate of barbecue from the, <laughs> the food line. Uh, but I, we, we happened hmm. to catch each other's eye at that moment. And you know, it was on my mind. I said, I, they were describing the film without saying what it was. I said, that sounds like our film. No. Really? They're about to, to say One Night in Kernersville. And, and again, when she said One Night in Kernersville, that moment was really uh, a, a pinnacle moment. It, I can almost feel it right now. Everything really stood still for me for a second because that was to be rewarded that way, to have people appreciate the film and have people really get inside of what it is that I love so much uh, was, was very fulfilling. And a question for the both of you. What do you hope that people will take away from One Night in Kernersville? Rodrigo? For me, what I hope they'll take is the love and the passion and the joy that I got. I'll let John answer the other one because I know he's gonna, he's gonna be in that same realm. But it's to, it's to, feel the, the, to feel what happened when I was there in that room and I was feeling that room. In a way, as a filmmaker, what you're trying to do is, as, uh, like, a, like an actor, uh, the camera's your instrument, like a musician, the camera is your instrument and you're trying to reflect back what you're feeling. And that's what people should get, what your experience was. So in the way, filmmaking is very subjective, ultimately, for at least the way I see it. And for me, what I wanted hopefully people to feel is that there's a moment, I remember when I stood there in the middle and I got these 14, 16 horns just blaring at me at the same time and I could feel the particles of sound just hitting me. And I'd never felt anything quite like it. And there was this sort of sensual... Uh, just almost spiritual moment of, of, of bliss. And if anybody takes anything from it, that's what I would love for them to take. The joy of jazz, the bliss of jazz, and, and, and if hopefully I, I threw people into that moment, which is very intimate and very tender and very loving in many ways, uh, about one of the great art forms of American culture. John, your thoughts? Uh, very simply, I'd, I'd encourage people to honor their passion and follow their dreams. This idea of putting together a band and recording it this way lived in my head for years. And I had been busy with other things, other bands and other projects, teaching, traveling, performing, everything else. But it was always there. And it was something that ate at me. And I said, man, I, I just really want to do this. And uh, I, I made it possible so that it could happen. Uh, my, I've got a very su supportive system around me, good family, good friends. And, uh, and I, honored, I feel like I really honored that passion and I was true to my dream. And don't let anybody talk you from your dream. Well, Rodrigo, since you're talking about honing your crafts and dreams, Rodrigo, what, would, what advice would you have for an aspiring producer-director? I have two advice. First of all is film. Shoot. Film, 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 and then edit, 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 edit. And then show, show, show. And just keep doing it. So you got to film, and you got to do it. It's a craft. You can't wait around for somebody to give you money. You can't wait around for somebody to give you an idea you got to go for it. And I think the second thing is when you're shooting, make sure that you're shooting something you love. And then it gets tricky because when you're in love, you can very easily be out of focus. And so I think you got to be really careful of how you can be in love and yet be cool-headed and be able to be in the moment and yet be completely consumed by it so that you, you can actually relate to the people because ultimately what you're filming is a relationship between you as a filmmaker and the subject. That's all you're filming, is that space in between you two. And, and that's, uh, that takes a lot of time, a lot of experience, and basically just go for it. Any new projects on the horizon for either one of you? 
We're actually working on a documentary that's going to chronicle the lives of some young musicians uh, I have the privilege of working with every week. Uh, there's a group called the Jazz Force, and uh, there are high school students, actually a couple of junior high school students too, who have, uh, they, we found each other and we work together to preserve jazz. I, uh, I rehearse them every week. We're going to take them and do some traveling and really get them entrenched in what this music is all about. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a year in the life of a group of young teenage jazz musicians. Uh, many people call it a dying art form, and so we're going to see if that's real or not. That's real, right. Well, Rodrigo Dorfman, producer-director of One Night in Kernersville, John Brown, bassist and the leader of the John Brown Jazz Orchestra setting standard CD and also the associate professor of the practice of music and the director of the Duke University Jazz Program. To the both of you, congratulations and continued success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.